All right, in this fourth lesson of the Axial module, <clears throat> note that the big thing we're doing here is working with axial deformations. This will be the first time in our little block that we've pulled away our attention from only the force effects and force intensity down at that stress level, the micro level, and start talking about how much the member is going to deform. Right, so that's that's the big thing that we're doing here. Right? The other thing that you see here for some review assignments, you've got something about axial stress uh, and deformations you can take a look at. It's a very short video. You also see something about the Poisson effect in the examples. This is one we alluded to in earlier lessons, but we haven't really formally gotten into too much. Um, and this is going to keep popping up. We will have a formal lesson on it later on. Right. Let's hit a real quick review before we talk about St. Benant's principle and get into the deformations. Up to now, we've looked at axial stress for a very specific kind of situation. A member that has uh, this constant cross-sectional area. Oftentimes, when people want to refer to specifically the cross-sectional area, they'll use the subscript O or 0 uh, to indicate that. And so that's just sigma equals P over A. Now, this centrically applied load so that there's no bending, just pure stretching or shortening and compression um, is externally we might sometimes call that that force P. Sometimes when we get into the little tiny differential piece of this, the little DX, people like to call the axial force capital N. Some people don't because they think that looks like N for Newtons. So it's very much a preferential thing here. These two are the two most common symbols. Uh, both of them mean the internal axial force in the member. And we assume that the stress is spread out nice and uniform. So sigma equals P over A or N over A. Now you see up here something about the St. Venant's principle that is going to give us a guide to when this basic model is maybe not so good even for the sort of so-called perfect condition. So I'm going to turn over to a text uh, by Goodno and Gear. It has a nice little diagram. You'll find something similar in your textbook too that talks about this. If we were to take a member, this time in compression, it doesn't matter, tension or compression, apply a centric load, meaning right through the centroidal longitudinal axis of the member, then the sigma equals P over A would be pretty reasonable if we were far away from the edge. However, if we were to fit or um, some strain gauges and sensors much closer, what we'd find is the stress distribution is not nice and average and uniform. Instead, right under the load itself, it would be peaked and get away from that the um, where the load is applied, and it would be less. Right, there'd be a dimpling effect going on here. You could imagine this is pushing down, squeezing in a little dimple. That the strains would not be uniform all the way across the cross section. The further that we walk away, the more this begins to get spread out. And if we go far enough away, then it's pretty close to truly uniform across the cross section. Well, how far down do we have to go? In that hard, that as sort of a rule of thumb, that far down is. If the lateral distance is B, then we go down by a distance B. That least lateral width uh, takes us down to getting a away from the edge effects. And that would be true of this edge effect where the load is applied. If we had a hole in here, that would disrupt the stress field as well. And so take a look at what we have on an, in a, another example. Here's a member now in tension. We've got this hole in the middle. If we were out away from these little edge effects, then sigma equals P over A works pretty well. But when you're right at the hole, then right at the edge of the hole, it actually will peak up, get away from the edge of the hole, it goes down. The average of that would just be sigma equals P over A, where the A net not the whole gross area, but the A net would be what you'd use in that specific situation. Right? Now, in certain cases, such as what we would call fatigue kind of situations, this is a really important stress concentration. Stress concentration just means it's peaked more than what you'd predict with just using a simple averaging kind of model. And in a fatigue situation, that peak is particularly important. In civil structural design, because we're oftentimes working with plastic design where these effects are going to get smoothed out uh, because of where we're at in the stress strain curve, then that particular 
feature is not quite as important, but again, if you're talking about rupture, that can be uh, something a little bit more important. So that's what St. Finance Principle is all about. Get yourself away from edge effects, and when you do, this basic simple model is pretty reasonable. Let's see how this is all going to get uh, applied in an example. So here we've got a long bar one and a half meters long. It's got a small cross section in comparison to that length, so it really is a long linear uh, element. Um, and so and it's six millimeters by 50 millimeters. And we have a force of 35 kilonewtons applied on it. We're asked to find the axial stress. We're find it, asked to find the axial elongation of the bar. So we know how to do axial stress. That's the basic model that we've been working with already, that our axial stress will equal our axial force divided by our cross-sectional area. And so that's, I'm going to change that kilonewtons into newtons. So 35 times 10 to the third newtons over 6 millimeters by uh, 50 millimeters. And we do that, 35E3 divided by 6 divided by 50, and we get 116.667 repeating. Note the units here, newtons per square millimeter. Now, you know, we were given that this answer was 116.7 megapascals. Well, 7 because we rounded up the repeating 6. And we got tension, that makes sense, but megapascals, and we got this newton per square millimeter. Well, let's work with this a little bit, see what happens. Let's convert millimeters into meters. So we'll have 10 to the third millimeters. Those need to be squared per meter. That'll get squared too. And note when we do that, you end up with 116.6 repeating times 10 to the sixth newtons per square, mil square meter. Now, newtons per square meter is by definition a pascal. And so 10 to the sixth being a mega, then we end up with 116.7 mega pascals. Inherently what we find out here is that one megapascal in the end is equal to one newton per square millimeter. Make sure you know how to derive that. That's typically a quiz and oftentimes an exam question. Very small points but still on it nonetheless. Knowing how to work with units. And in the SI system, real loads, real cross uh, real structural members, we should anticipate stresses on the order of megapascal. That's a big reason why we go through and learn this particular uh, conversion, because of the realistic scale of things. All right, so there's our answer for the stress, except for we need to indicate the flavor. That's in tension. And now let's go after the axial elongation of the member. All right, so here we're going to work this out in a a very general kind of way, and that is we're going to go take a look at not the whole member, but rather we're going to look at a tiny piece of the member. Tiny in that it's going to be dx wide. Right now, as this axial stress that we just calculated is going to elongate that little piece. Notice I'm putting the stresses on the right side a little bit out to the right for a reason you're going to see very shortly. And that is that under tension, that member is going to elongate. And as it elongates, the Poisson effect is that the lateral dimension will actually shorten. And we're not going to focus on that part yet. I'm just going to focus on this elongation. And so this little piece here will elongate. It's a differential piece, so that elongation we'll call d delta. So somehow we have to relate the amount of stress to the amount of this deformation that's going to happen. And the key to that is our material behavior. 
And that comes from the tension test, and we talked about that in the previous lesson. In that stress versus strain curve relationship, we're going to focus on elastic behavior. Why? Well, because note, our applied stress was less than the proportional limit. And therefore, we have elastic behavior. And we're going to assume that it is, because that was the proportional limit, it's really not an assumption, that that directly tells us that this relationship between stress and strain being linear is exactly what we want, right? Proportional means linear behavior. So sigma is equal to E epsilon, E being Young's modulus. So this was sigma PL. We just used that proportional limit there. We're elastic, therefore Hooke's law applies. This is what relates the amount of stress to the amount of strain or deformation. Let me say that again. There's a really important exact analogy to be made here. Right? Stress is to strain, uh, strain as force is to deformation. Right? The force is on the global level, deformation at the global level, how much totally this member elongates. Stress is at the micro level, it's the intensity of the force, and strain is the intensity of the deformation. These two up here, all at the micro level, these two at the macro level. So we come back, and now we're going to apply our understanding of basic calculus. Right? That the total amount of deformation, let's assume the left end doesn't move, we'll just draw this deformation entirely over here on the right side. That total amount of elongation is delta. Right? And delta, our axial change in length, Change in length means deformation. Right? That in calculus terms, well, that would just be equal to add up all of the little deltas that happen here at the micro level, add it all the way up through the, the entire length of the member. Right? So we'll formally actually integrate that from zero to delta. It's kind of a trivial uh, expression written like that. But now let's start working with it. Right? Strain, right? how much strain? Remember, stress is to strain as force is to deformation. Stress was the axial force over the cross-sectional area. Strain, well, particularly axial strain or normal strain, is going to be equal to the change in length over the original length. Right? And since we're talking at the micro level here, then that will be the d delta over the original length of that member, which was dx. Well, I didn't write that really quite properly, because what you want, that's d delta over dx. I want a d delta sub to sub be uh, substituted in there. So let's try that again. Equals the integral from 0 to something, we'll come back to that, and d delta we substitute in, that's strain times dx. Now we're integrating with respect to x, that means we go from 0 to L, and now from Hooke's law we know that epsilon, oh, well that's equal to sigma over E, Young's modulus, integrated along the length of the member. Now with a centrically loaded which means pure axial elongation or strength um, or shortening. So centrically loaded member, right? Force passes through the member in prismatic member. So centrically loaded prismatic member means prismatic means that we have the same cross-sectional area over the whole length. That means the stress 
and we're assuming prismatic also means that we you really want to say homogeneous meaning the same material property all the way through the length those are constants not a function of the length so that's just then pull that out sigma over e integral from 0 to l dx and then that definite integral just becomes sigma l over e and that's our delta formula now sigma itself is actually our axial force over the cross-sectional area which doesn't vary so again that that's our one single nice expression for centrically loaded prismatic member that the axial elongation equals nl over ae important enough equation to memorize but have your equation reference card out look that up under axial kind of conditions now that's the formula we haven't actually evaluated it so let's go do that here next All right so delta equals now we've already calculated the stress so there's not really any point in recalculating it so I'll take the formula the version that's sigma over e and so that's 116.7 megapascals really six repeating there right it's 1.5 meters long and divided by e well e is 143.5 gigapascals that's the same thing as 143.5 times 10 to the third uh, megapascals right giga is 10 to the ninth so that's convenient to write it that way because look at what happens here we're going to end up with megapascals canceling out and when we put this into the calculator we're going to have oh wait you know it'd be nice to have guessed what the answer is now we're going to be doing this a lot throughout the semester but you know you haven't had a lot of experience actually zero experience calculating deformations and you're may not going to be aware of what's going to happen here we have an answer already provided to us uh, that the this realistic scenario the elongation is only about one millimeter and huh that's interesting that's something to keep in mind we're on the scale of millimeters now this here you can tell I dropped off here or times 10 to the third that's important um, I knew that right away because this number would look like it's about one and I know we're not gonna get close to a, a millimeter and I was like whoa wait a minute something's not right here I dropped something off and sure enough three orders of magnitude is what I dropped off so take a look when you do this math we got our stress times 1.5 divided by the 143.5 e3 and wow yeah look at that we get this small number at 0 0.0012195 meters and so the plus indicating that it's all elongating in this case it's consistent with tension and so we'll convert that into our millimeters Let's see 1000 millimeters per meter and so then we get the answer that is 1.22 millimeters for our elongation so there's your two answers here uh, to in our first application of um, axial deformations and strains one for the stress model here one for the elongation